Hello and welcome back to the STM32 CubeID Advanced Debug Features video. Right now we are going to continue with our debug exploration for the serial wire debug session. So I'll just skip ahead and go to the cube ID with the very same code that we've been working so far. As you guys can see, I'm back to the code editing perspective because I wanted to highlight a very unique feature that we're going to explore on this session, which is the print death. So there are a few calls throughout the code using the print death. As you guys can see, I'm highlighting those right now. And as I mentioned, the print death is actually relying on the underscore write function. In this function is using the ITM send chart to actually print out the characters for us. And this is going to be using the serial wire output to actually send the characters over. And that's why I'm only allowed to use TX functions in this moment. So let's go ahead and enter in our debug session. And now that we are back on the debug perspective, I can go to window, show view, serial wire viewer, and this time I'm going to use the ITN data console. So right here, you see that the port that is being associated is the port zero. And by entering on the settings, we can actually see that the CMOS port that is actually enabled is indeed the ITN port zero. So that does make sense. And I can just hit OK. And I can start the trace. As we would expect, as the code goes on throughout those prints, the messages are going to appear here for us. But before we do that, I just wanted to highlight another very useful feature, which is the breakpoints. We all know that if I just add a double click here, I can place a breakpoint and as the code moves into this direction, it, the code is going to stop and I can use the breakpoint. What you may or may not know is that we can actually change the breakpoint to send us a dynamic printf as well. And we can see the printf message that's going to appear. So I can just add this particular breakpoint here and instead of show the, the call to stop through here, it's going to send me an information on the debugger console that this line has been achieved throughout the call execution. So I'm actually going to do both right now. I've already have my serial wire viewer ITM data console login information so the start trace is available and I can also see that the debugger console is also on. So by the time that I execute the code I do have this special breakpoint that I mentioned here so I expect to see a print message here and then I'll just switch to the tab. So as the code evolves I can actually see here saying hit line 97 and we can see where it hit it or that it is. I can actually edit the message that I want to appear uh, when I go to the settings of this given breakpoint and I can switch then back and forth between regular breakpoint or just the dynamic printf breakpoint. So this is just a highlight information. What we are really here to validate right now is the serial wire viewer and it's been going on for a while. We can see that our main loop is actually counting the value of our uh, variable so we can see where we are in the values that are being plotted. I just paused the program and I also scrolled up into the very first message so we can see that even from the start along with the special breakpoint we can see both information being sent. These are two ways to use information on your debug console or printf when you don't have the serial wire viewer at your disposal you can use the serial wire output to just printf using the ITN. I hope you enjoy playing with the printfs and see you guys on the next session where we are going to explore the final usage of the serial wire viewer. Thanks for watching and see you soon.